Hey, I'm Allie with Allie's Boutique and today we are going to use transfers on oyster shells. Now this is one of my most favorite things to do and it's one of my most popular videos. Every time I post a video or do a Facebook Live with this type of project, it seems like people like them. So I thought I would do a video where you could see exactly how I apply the transfers to an oyster shell and if the transfers happen to mess up, how I fix them. So let's get started. Today I'm going to show you how to put transfers onto an oyster or seashell. These are the little framed oyster shells that I've made in the past and applied a transfer to just to add detail and make them really fun. So I created these by using a plain small canvas that I deconstructed. I glued the little half beads onto the frame and then painted. So they're pretty fun. I'll just show you a couple that I have made. So this is what we're going to do in our video today. So you're going to need a few things to get started. Now the first thing you're going to need some oyster shells. Okay, so there's a couple of tricks to this. You can just hop on Amazon and grab a bunch of oyster shells. And they're going to come pretty similar to this. You might want to bleach them and clean them a little better than when you receive them, but you can order them on Amazon. You can also go to some of your local craft stores like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You might be able to find them there, but I find that Amazon's the best source for oyster shells. And then your third option, if you live in a coastal city, you might be able to hit up some restaurants and get them free. But I will tell you this, if you get them from a restaurant, they're not going to be cleaned in any way. They're going to be stinky and you'll have to go through a cleaning and bleaching process much more extensive than if you just ordered a bag off of Amazon. You're going to need to find yourself a transfer that you absolutely love. Now this one is by Makers, a Maker Studio. And the reason I chose it is one, I love it. I love the neutral colors, but two, it has very small elements that I can use. See, they're small. They'll fit nicely within the area of the seashell that I'm going to apply the transfer. So choose a transfer that you can either cut small little elements out of the design or they're already a smaller transfer. The next thing you're going to need is some white paint. Now you want to have a solid color base to apply your transfer to. So we're going to use our DIY paint, which is a clay based paint to paint this area white and I'm using white swan. And that way I'll have a white base to put my transfer on. The next thing you're going to need is just any metallic gold paint. I happen to love this one. I love the color. It's called Glorious Gold and it just is a go-to color for me when I'm using my gold paint. You can embellish the edges with wax, but I like to use paint. It seems to be more durable, and this is the one of my choice. It's Deco Art Dazzling Metallic Metallic Paint. It's an acrylic paint, and it's called Glorious Gold. And then you're just going to need a couple of tools. I'm going to use a, just a good old paintbrush, one of my oldest ones that I still love, some scissors to cut your transfer out, and... You will want a top coat when you're all done. I will use Tough Top by Rethunk Junk Paint. I do like this top coat. You can also use DIY's Big Top. But I happen to be out right now, so I'm going to use a substitute. So we'll do a couple of shells today. All right, so all I want to do is just paint over that color on the seashell. 
and a lot of times it takes a couple of coats. You just want a blank canvas to work with because whatever color is underneath your transfer is going to come through your transfer. So always keep that in mind, especially when you're applying transfers to a furniture project. Whatever that base coat is that's underneath is going to come through and it will change the appearance of your transfer. So a lot of times if you want to maintain the color and the true design of the transfer, it's best to paint your white or off-white, any shade of white. Give yourself a blank canvas and then apply the color all around the piece. That's beautiful. White Swan by DIY Paint is the perfect color for your oyster shells. It's a clay-based paint. It's highly pigmented and I will probably just need one other coat of this. And it does have that dries to a chalky finish, which is very similar to what the shell has naturally. So we're gonna let this dry and then we'll move on to the fun part. Okay, now this is what I consider the truly fun part. Applying the transfers and picking the transfers that you want. So I love the little bit of color in this butterfly. So we might use that one. I do love this beautiful moth. I love the pinks. So we might we might could use that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them out. Now, a couple things about transfers. They have a protective backing, so you do not wanna remove that until you're ready to place your transfer onto your project. So we are going to just cut this beautiful little moth out with all the beautiful colors. And I'm leaving the protective backing on. And I'm just cutting around it a little bit. So I'm going to cut this one out that I originally liked. And I think we're going to use this script. Let's do a little bit of layering with our transfers. All right, so we have a few elements from our transfer pieces that we're going to use on our project. And then we're going to use the little plastic or wooden tool that they supply in your transfer packet to rub your transfers on. So now that my paint's dry, <clears throat> I'm going to apply my cute little transfer. I think this one will fit nicely on this shell. And this one can fit nicely on this shell. So we're going to layer our... I'm going to put these words on the bottom so then my butterfly can fit on top. So I'm going to remove the protective backing. Just find any place that you like the words now and press down. Now transfers on shells are kind of tricky because shells have a lot of dimension. They are hard to get into the little grooves sometimes with your transfers. But you just kinda gotta hold it down and press down. Now this part is not gonna be perfect. You just have to accept that it's gonna look aged and imperfect. And that's what makes it beautiful. So that's all nicely adhered to the shell. So then where do I place my little butterfly? I'm gonna place them right in there and I'm gonna angle them just a little bit. I'm gonna remove the protective backing and I'm going to lay my little butterfly right in there. Now, as you rub down, you'll see that your transfer will begin to adhere to your project. It will become kind of a frosty look instead of a clear image. And that means your image is sticking to your project. Okay, 
be careful not to move it around, especially when you're working with uneven surfaces like this. Do your best to keep it in one space or place. With this type of project, it's okay if some of your image does not completely stick down because it's somewhat of a vintage distressed. This is your transfer on your oyster shell. Now I have in the past gone in and touched up with paint wherever that transfer, you can see here where some of the transfer did not rub down. And that could be a combination of my paint was not completely dry. It felt dry to the touch, but I probably should have let it sit much longer. Um, and then the texture of the shell, not allowing it to get down there and get the pressure that it needed. So you can leave that or you can go in and touch up with some paint. And I can show you that in just a little bit but I think it turned out very beautiful. And this moth will cover much of the shell. So if I layer anything, I'm gonna wanna make sure I put it in an area that'll actually peek through and be seen. So I think that I will cut this little portion out, make sure that it's up in this area where the moth isn't necessarily at. And here's an example of do as I say, not as I do. You noticed I took the backing off and then decided to cut. Not always a good choice and it can turn out badly. <laughs> So be sure that <clears throat> you leave that protective backing on until you're ready to stick it down to your surface. I'm holding it down I'm not letting it go or slip and slide around because of the texture of this shell Now this one had a little bit of um, trouble getting down because of the shape of the shell, but that's no problem. We're just gonna go in there and touch up with a little bit of paint. And on previous videos, I've gotten this question a lot. What kind of paint are you using when you're touching up your images from the transfer? And a lot of times I will just use chalk paint or I will use acrylic paint. It really doesn't matter. Either will adhere nicely to your piece and um, fix the little imperfections if you want to do that. If not, you can leave it as it is, perfectly imperfect. But I'm gonna show you for the um, benefit of this video how I would touch it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my color and then I'll add the detail with the black. So if you look right here, I'm missing a little bit of my coral and a little bit of my pinks. So I'm gonna take my coral and just touch up in there.
when you do this, it almost gives it that hand painted look. I'm going to go ahead and put that coral even over the black just a little bit because I'm going to go back in and touch up that black. And just so you know, I am using Dixie Bell's Flamingo. Okay, now I'm going to use just a little bit of this black to go in and add my black detail again. And in this case, I'm using Caviar by Dixie Belle. wherever I see little imperfections or cracks and touching up with a little bit of paint. So I'm not going to do like a continuous line. I am just going to gently outline and, it, and kind of let it be broken so you don't want a complete solid outline. I'm going to go ahead where this little wing should be and create a little bit of an outline there where his little body is a little outline there. I'm going to add a little bit of that detail that I covered up right in here. And I'm going to turn it around so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to add a little bit of an outline right through here. Go in and create that outline of that wing. Now I'm pretty happy with how the touch up on my moth turned out, but I'm going to go in with a little bit of gold metallic paint and go around the edges and maybe embellish my moth with just a little touch of gold. So I am going to start by putting a little gold paint out and just in little spots here and there, I'm going to put a little gold paint. No real rhyme or reason to it. Just want to add a little bit of shine to my moth and you don't have to do this I just thought it'd be pretty to add just a smidge of gold here and there maybe just touch his little antennas just a bit So you want to be careful not to touch that until it dries, but I'm going to move along and just paint my edges gold. And right in here, I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. There you go. Now some people choose to paint the entire back side of their shell gold. You can do that. You can just do a little outline all the way around. All right, so super easy. 
So this one that I chose to leave distressed, I'm just going to go in and put a little gold around the edges. And again, I like to paint this entire area right in here gold, but you don't have to. You can just do an outline if you like. But I usually paint it. So there you go. So beautiful. Now these are ready. Once I put a little top coat on, as soon as this gold paint dries, to be framed, or they even make beautiful little ring dishes. You can set them on trays. You can drill holes in them and add beads. Okay, so last step is the top coat. And I am using Refunk Junk Tough Top. And I'm just going to take a little brush. And give it a good coat or two. And this will protect your artwork, your transfer, and it will also add some beautiful sheen so that all the beautiful details and metallic come out and look gorgeous. Same thing with this. I'm just going to go over the entire piece with a coat of Tough Top. And now I'm going to let it dry and then my project will be ready to display however I would like. <laughs> 